Hey, brother! Ben, I know how you love Frozen and all, but, uh, have you ever noticed that, well, it doesn't make any sense? the actual premise of this movie? Like, if you can get past the catchy songs and the adorable snowmen and the glorious, glorious ice. Oh yeah, Ben definitely wrote this. What is the actual premise of this movie? Unlike most Disney movies, the plot is not driven forward by some conflict introduced by the villain, which I will say I greatly appreciate. What literally happens is tiny little girl Elsa makes a small mistake, which is promptly fixed, and then the fear of repeating it haunts her every waking moment for the rest of her life. Most of which is spent in complete and utter isolation until she finally confronts her fear and hey, she's not afraid of it anymore. And also a sneaky prince shows up and tries to take advantage of the situation. But what really sets up the entire plot of the movie is Anna getting hit square in the face with some ice magic while the two were playing as kids. Their dad conveniently has a book for just such an occasion and rushes the two girls out to the trolls. Which I guess was a good idea, but let me ask you this. How is the Troll King helping at all? Like, what was her ailment? She got hit in the face with magic. And so, obviously, the cure was to make her forget about magic? How does this help? He says, You are lucky it wasn't her heart. The heart is not so easily changed. But the head can be persuaded. And the king seems just fine with this response, but as someone who has recently become a parent, let me tell you how I would have responded. Per pers persuaded? What are you talking? You let me explain the situation before you go about erasing parts of my daughter's mind? She was hit in the head with ice magic persuasion. She's not being mind controlled or something. Are we having the same conversation here? But whatever, the king just trusts him implicitly and allows him to work his forgetfulness magic. But again, how does it help? How does making her forget stop the fact that she was hit in the face with the ice, right? Like, I'm sure, you know what, Luke, my son, I'm sure he's just gonna fall down and skin his knee one day and I'll be like, you know what, just forget it happened. That'll make it better. And I'll be like, but it's, oh, it still hurts? Like, if you wanted to erase someone's memory, what he really should have done was erased Elsa's memory of doing this to her sister because it literally haunts every moment of her life moving forward. To be fair though, Anna does smile after having her memory wiped, and as anyone in the field of medicine will tell you, well, smiles are good. But no, Anna is left in the complete dark for 10 plus years and has no idea what's happening, and Elsa is suffering during that entire time, which is actually stopping her from getting control of her powers. Like once when Ben and I were kids, I pushed him over and he hit his head on the coffee table, and that sucked, but this would be the equivalent of me being afraid to push anything ever again for fear that entire societies would collapse. Sorry about that. But just watch Elsa when they're kids. She already has really good good control of it. I think she would have had no problem mastering this if it weren't for the insane fear. But hey, the Troll King does leave the fun for Anna. What a nice gesture. All those happy memories with your sister who now suddenly doesn't talk to you forever, ever again, ever. Why? Because the real problem is that they just don't explain why it's a bad thing if Anna knows about the powers. Like, if she relearns about it, is her brain gonna be in trouble again? Is that what the white stripe means? Is she just surviving because her brain has been convinced that that couldn't have happened? Because if that's true, then it seems like the moment Anna relearns that Elsa has ice power, she should have just gone down like a ton of bricks. Also, can I just point out that the Troll King warns how dangerous it would have been if she got hit in the heart because he couldn't heal it, but then later in the movie he explains he does know how to heal it? Oh no. An act of true love can thaw a frozen heart. And what act do we see Anna do which ends up saving herself? She rushes to her sister's aid and blocks the sword from hitting her. So, a family member rushing to save another family member, like... Maybe rushing off in the middle of the night with your two daughters to see some trolls? Does the act of trying to save your child not count as an act of true love? Do you really think her parents aren't capable of this troll king? It sounds to me like if she'd been hit in the heart, she would have been healed on arrival at the troll's place and not had to forget about her sister's magic and spend 10 years in isolation. Also, are we to believe that an act of true love was not directed towards honor for the rest of her entire childhood? Because later when she heals her heart with the act of true love, the white stripe goes away, but it's still there for for the rest of her life, so... 
Although maybe it's not that surprising because the king's plan is maybe the plan to be the worst dad ever. And I think people don't focus on this because shortly after the plan is enacted, he dies on screen and you feel really bad for him. And it, I agree, it is sad, but like, let's review it because it is a really bad plan. Now, Elsa, you're not being punished. You just can't leave your room <clears throat> ever until you learn to control your powers. Even if we die, don't even come to the funeral, which she does not. And Anna, you, for reasons I can't explain and for reasons that don't make sense, you also can suddenly not ever leave the palace or talk to anyone, and especially not your sister, even if we die. In fact, especially if we die. She's not a very reassuring guy, is he? You'll be fine, Elsa. Nope! And also, also, actually, actually, I know the trolls left a lot of fun memories with your sister in there that'll probably drive you insane now that she'll never be a part of your life again, but... No, wait, no, no buts. You're welcome! Why can't Anna know? Why must she suffer? Is it because if she knows, she can then tell other people? But she doesn't know, so if that's the risk, then why can't she leave the palace? Why does she have to suffer? Does she really, literally not see Elsa from this moment? until this moment? Sorry, but for all of their isolation, the fact that they end up even as remotely adjusted as they are is kind of ridiculous. Which is to say, maybe they actually aren't that well adjusted because after just a single day of exposure to other people, Elsa flees the kingdom, causes an eternal winter, and Anna almost marries away the kingdom, so... Hmm. And I put eternal winter in quotes there because uh, I feel like they're pretty liberal with that phrase for something that has only lasted a day so far. Although speaking of just one day, one of the things I love about this movie is that Kristoff totally freaks out when he finds out Anna got engaged to Hans after knowing him for just one day. Good for you, Disney. You got engaged to someone you just met that day? Although she also only knows Kristoff for a day and... Now, true, they're not actually engaged, so maybe that's a little better, but they do say they are in love with each other after a day, so good try, Disney. You know who I'm not sure was trying very hard, though, was Hans. Like, yes, he's definitely very smart and dangerous and charismatic and good at getting people to do what he wants, but let's go over his actual plan. When he arrives in Arendelle, he does not know that the queen is going to suddenly display terrible ice powers. He just wants to be king, so when he shows up, his entire actual plan is just Mary Elsa. Like, that's his whole plan. It was just kind of a long shot, if you ask me. To be fair, he does actually woo one of the princesses in less than a day, so maybe it's not quite as far-fetched as I'm making it sound, but when you're making a move for the throne, you'd think you'd have a little bit more of a plan, right? You cannot deny his improv skills, though. We finish each other's sandwiches. That's what I was gonna say. I'm no, it is not. You were gonna say sentences. Fortunately for him, though, a lot of things end up going his way, like literally just accidentally running into the other princess, the queen having terrible ice powers and fleeing the kingdom and then conveniently being left in charge of the kingdom when the other princess leaves to go find her. Now I won't discount his own manipulation in each scene to further his cause, but at some point he just starts being dumb, like here. But no harm is to come to the queen. What? Why? Like at this point, he is pretty committed to Anna. Like he can't switch sisters. So if he wants to become king, he needs to marry Anna and then Elsa needs to die. In fact, he eventually explains that is his exact actual plan. After we married, I'd have to stage a little accident for Elsa. But so then what is wrong with killing her right here and now, Hans? These other two bozos came primed and ready. You're not even gonna have to kill her. You're not even gonna have to lie about what happened. You can just walk into town and be like, the Duke of Wesselton sent his men to kill the queen. I sentence him to treason and death and get him out of here. Everyone seems to distrust the Duke anyway, and everyone trusts Hans, and he would look like a hero, and he could still marry Anna and still be king, and no one would blame him for anything. And to that end, he probably could have killed Elsa himself himself and then just use that exact lie back in town. We know he's okay with lying about killing a sister. He tells Elsa, your sister is dead because of you. And he says that moments before he's about to murder her. So why did you prolong it at all? Also, also Hans, come in close here, buddy. Why don't you just marry Anna? Everything is already in place for you. Elsa wants to leave. Anna agrees she's dangerous. And you even seem capable of taking care of the kingdom and handing out cloaks and glog and stuff. Why must they both also die? And why do you go and tell Anna your entire plan monologue style if you're not going to just stay in the room and make sure she dies? Yeah, definitely some flaws for who seems to be like such a smart guy. You'd think you would have thought it a little bit through more. But you know who definitely did not think through their plan? 
Elsa. Elsa's plan in the movie is, after 10 years of not being seen, show up for one day, become queen, and then disappear again forever. That sounds like a great ruler. But then her powers are gonna be revealed, so she decides to run away and live in an ice castle in a kingdom of isolation, which, and I'm not gonna lie, it's a really cool animation sequence and the castle is impressive, but like, how are you gonna live up there? What are you gonna eat? Is there a toilet, an ice throne, if you will? Do you know how to like ice craft indoor plumbing? I suppose she could forage for food and hunt stuff, but I'm also pretty sure she just made like the middle of summer into freezing cold blizzard, and I'm pretty sure like climate change snaps like that are super bad for the environment, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you just killed literally the entire ecosystem. Like, all of it. And if they're not dead yet, they, it's not gonna be more in a few days. I know the cold doesn't bother you, but I'm betting hunger will. And there you go, Ben. That is why Frozen just doesn't make any sense. The entire plot hinges on the paper thin reasoning for Anna not knowing about Elsa's powers. It causes all of the problems in the movie. You know who's flawless in this movie, though? Olaf. Everything about it makes sense. Oh, look at that. I've been impaled. My question for you and everyone else is, what do you think? What did I miss? What other things don't make sense? Let me know your thoughts in the towel section down below. These socks are amazing. Guys, thanks as always for watching this video. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so you don't miss any further Frozen action from us. If you want to see what happened to Kristoff's parents, you can check out this video right here. Or if you want to see how Olaf is actually the one who performed the true act of love at the end of the movie, you can check out this video right here. But Ben, that's all I've got for you today, man. I will see you in another life, brother.